Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is Logarithmic Differentiation. So in the last couple of lessons, we've learned how to take derivatives of a logarithm. Specifically, natural logarithms are vastly more important. They're vastly more common than the generic log base A or whatever you might see every now and then. But logarithm base E, we call natural logarithm, very, very common uh, all throughout math, engineering, science. So here, we're not going to be taking derivatives of logarithms, but we're going to use how to how to use logarithms to take derivatives of other functions in a way, in a little clever way. You'll see how it works out, but we're going to use logarithms to take derivatives of other more complicated functions that don't themselves contain logarithms. This is a little complicated sounding. I promise it's going to be very, very simple. Let's give you uh, this function. y is equal to x to the power of x. Now this, if I ask you to find a derivative, you don't know how to do it. I mean, you definitely know how to take the derivative of x squared. That's the power rule, 2x to the first power, right? You also know how to take the derivative of 2 to the power of x, uh, or e to the power of x, right? Because it's a number to a variable, number to a variable. We know how to take the derivatives of these. But this does not fit into any of those categories. It's, it's, an, it's a variable to a variable. This is a variable to the power of a number, a number to the power of a variable. But this is different, so you don't know how to take the derivative of this. So if I ask you to do it, you don't know what to do. However, with a clever little thing, little, uh, kind of a trick, you kind of learn it here, it's called logarithm, logarithmic differentiation. We're allowed to do whatever we want to both sides of this equation. In this case, we're going to take the logarithm, the natural logarithm, of both sides of the equation. And then the equation is still valid. So what we'll have on the left is the natural log of y. And on the right, we'll have the natural log of x to the power of x. Now, this x to the x, this is wrapped up inside the logarithm like this. You can put around the y if you want as well. You might say, why do I want to do that? Well, because I'm also allowed to take derivatives of both sides of an equation. It remains balanced. So what I could do is the derivative with respect to x of natural log of y. That's what I'm taking the derivative of. And on the right-hand side, I could take the derivative with respect to x of natural log of x to the power of x, like this. Now this is something I'm allowed to do. Now on the left-hand side, I know how to do this derivative, right? The only wrinkle is that I have a variable here, x, and a, a mismatch in variables. So I have to use implicit differentiation. So first I take the derivative with respect to y first, and that'll be just 1 over y. But then I have to multiply by how y changes with respect to x. This is implicit differentiation. We've covered it before. Basically, what you're doing here is you're taking the derivative first with respect to y of natural log of y, and then you're multiplying by dy dx. And so because the dy's cancel, what you're really taking is the derivative of this with respect to x. But you do it in the chain rule in the two-step process. The derivative of this with respect to y is 1 over y, but then you have to multiply by how y itself changes with the underlying variable x. So we're done with the left. Now on the right-hand side, you have the same problem. You really don't know how to do this because, yes, you could take the derivative of this logarithm, but when I try to take with the chain rule the derivative of the inside, then you're back to exactly where you started and you don't know how to do that. But because it's wrapped in a logarithm, check it out. What you can do, d dx, the property of logarithm means any exponent can come outside. So what I'll do is I'm taking the derivative all right, but I can bring 1x out times the natural log of x, like this. So that is a property of logarithms. It has nothing to do with calculus. If I just told you, you know, over here off to the side, if I just told you natural log of x squared, then because you have an exponent inside of a log, you can write this as 2 times the natural log of x. The exponent can come right outside of the function. Normally, you can't just reach inside of a function and bring, bring it out. Uh, it's like if it's inside of a sine or a cosine or a tangent or a square root, you can't just grab it and bring it out. But with exponents and logarithms, it, it works out that you're allowed to, and that's all back in pre-calculus. The 2 can come out times the natural log of what is left over. Here, the x is coming out, natural log of what is left over, but it's all... I'm still taking the derivative of the same exact thing. Now, why do I care about doing this? I'm not going to do anything else to the left. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to have the 1 over y out here, and I'm going to have uh, dy dx. Ultimately, I want to solve for dy dx because that's what I'm trying to find the derivative of. But this is a product rule. Uh, first function, second function. So it's the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. And I know how to take these derivatives. So it'll be 1 over y dy dx. And then it's going to be x times, what is the derivative of natural log of x? Well, it's 1 over x. 
and then I have the natural log of x. What is the derivative of x? It's just one. And so I've done, I've done the whole problem. All I have to do is solve for this. But for, before we do it, let's just keep this on the left, dy dx. On the right, the x and the x cancel, so you're just going to get a one, and you're going to have natural log of x over here. Okay, so we want to solve for the derivative, right? So we do that. So dy dx. We're going to multiply both sides by y. We multiply it over here, it cancels. On the right-hand side, we're going to have a y here, and then y times natural log of x right here. We just multiply the y across both sides of the equation. This is what we get. So this is the derivative. However, the variable y, when we trace back through our work, we defined it to be x to the power of x. So we can substitute that into the answer, dy with respect to x. It's going to be x to the power of x plus x to the power of x times natural log of x. Now you can absolutely leave the answer uh, like this, or you can say that it's x to the power of x, and on the inside you have 1 plus, just basically factor it out, natural log of x. So however you want to write it, x to the power of x plus x to the power of x times natural log of x, or you can write it as a factored form, x to the power of x, 1 plus natural log of x. These are the two final answers. However you want to write it, I don't care. I, I think they're both fine to use, to be honest with you. Now, how did we do this? How was this possible? We did not know how to take this derivative, but notice it involved an exponentiation. And uh, the only advice I can give you is that exponents and logarithms kind of go together as peanut butter and jelly, right? Because of the laws of logarithms, when we take, when, when we write this thing as a natural log, we can pull the exponent out, and that is the fundamental thing that allows us to take the derivative because we don't know what the derivative of this is, but if we are able to pull the x out, we know what the derivative of each of these pieces that are left over, and that is what allows us to do it. So this logarithmic differentiation skill, it basically is going to allow you to take derivatives of functions that you don't know how to take, but that involve exponents. So if, you, if you're staring at an exponent function and you don't know how to take it with the traditional methods we've learned, and there's an exponent in there, chances are you could probably use logarithms to take it. All right, so let's take a look at the next one and see if we can notice the same sort of thing. What about y is equal to cosine of x to the power of x? Exact same problem. We know how to take the derivative of cosine, but we don't know how to take, you know, with an x in the, in the, uh, uh, in the exponent like that because we, this is an exponential with a, a, a constant to the power of x. We know that. Uh, but this is not a constant. This is a function to the power of x. So we don't really know how to take the derivative of this. So you see the same kind of thing. You have some complicated function to the power of x. We are able to use logarithmic differentiation. Doesn't mean that's the only way to do this, but this is the way we're going to tackle here. What we'll do is we'll take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of y, natural log of cosine x. I'll kind of wrap it up here to the power of x like this. So the natural log of y is here. On the right-hand side, what we can do is we can pull the x outside the logarithm. So x times natural log cosine of x. So we can write it like this. And pulling it out like that, that's going to be fundamentally what allows us to, to solve this. So we can take the derivative with respect to x of natural log of y. And then we can take the derivative with respect to x of this thing, which is x times natural log of cosine of x like this. And we know how to take the derivative of everything here. We have exactly the same situation on the left that we had before. We want to take the derivative of this, but the, the variables mismatch, so it's going to be 1 over y times the derivative of the inside with respect to x. Right? This is the chain rule. It's exactly the same step that we did here. So these problems are all going to basically involve that on the left. On the right, the variables do match, and we have the product rule. So it's going to be x times the derivative of this, natural log of cosine of x, I'll take that derivative later, plus natural log cosine of x uh, times derivative of this. I could take it now, but I'm going to go ahead and take it later. And so first times derivative of the second plus the second times derivative of the first. I don't need that extra bracket at the end. Sorry about that. All right, so on the left, we're not going to do anything with this yet. We'll save that for the end, dy dx here. And on the right-hand side, inside here, how do we take the derivative of this? Well, the derivative of the logarithm is 1 over whatever's on the inside. But then we have to, to take the derivative of the inside. Here I'm going to go and do it in the same step, otherwise I'll be writing forever. The derivative of the cosine is negative sine of x. So I'm taking that derivative kind of like in one step there. Uh, then we have the natural log of cosine of x, and then times the 1 here at the end, the derivative of this guy is 1. 
All right, what we want to do next, we have some cleaning up we can do in here. Actually, let's go ahead and do it in the next step. One over y, dy, dx. What we have here, sine over cosine, we can write that as tangent, and the negative sign can come out. So it would be negative x times the tangent of x, because sine over cosine is tangent, right? And then we can have plus natural log of cosine of x, and then we have the times 1 right there. Now we need to multiply by y and move it over there because we're trying to solve for this. So dy with respect to x, we move the y over here by multiplication. So when we multiply by y over here, we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to kind of multiply it by the entire term. I'm going to rewrite the term x tangent of x plus natural log of cosine x like this. I could certainly distribute the y into each of the terms, and I'm just going to leave it on the outside. Then we'll have dy dx. And just like before, the variable y we have defined to be cosine of x to the x power. So this can be written as cosine of x to the x power. Then on the inside, negative x times tangent of x plus natural log of cosine of x, just like this. So cosine to the x power and then negative x tangent x plus natural log cosine of x on the inside. And of course, if you want to distribute it in, you can do that. You'll just have to write more stuff. That's why I didn't multiply the y in, because I knew I was going to substitute it. I was going to factor it back out anyway, so I just left it on the outside. I mean, this is ugly by anybody's definition, but really, in involving logarithms, there's not... It's, it makes it much, much easier. I'm not saying there's, there's no other way to do these problems. Uh, sometimes there are ways in which we can, we can do uh, them, but but using logarithms oftentimes makes it much, much easier. So this is called logarithmic differentiation. All right, we have one more, and uh, you know it's very similar, so we're not going to do any more after this. y is equal to cosine of x uh, raised to the power of cosine of x. Now that is bizarrely weird, but we want to take that derivative. So what we'll do is we'll take the derivative of both sides, or I should say we'll take the logarithm of both sides. So we'll have natural log of y on the left, and we'll have natural log of cosine of x uh, to the power of cosine of x. That looks crazy, right? And I'm going to write this in brackets to remind ourselves that it's all inside the natural log. Now using the properties of logs, right, I can bring the exponent outside the log, cosine of x times natural log of cosine of x. That's a little weird. And there's lots of parentheses here, so that's not very pretty to write, but you get the idea. Now we can take the derivative of both sides. So I can take d with respect to x, natural log of y, and then I can take d with respect to x of all this stuff, which will be uh, cosine of natural log of cosine of x. Close it, close it. The derivative applies to everything in there. Now on the right hand side, this is a little bit ambiguous and I am going to correct it right here. Sorry about that. What, what I'm really trying to say is it's cosine of x multiplied, right, by this logarithm term. So I didn't want it to look like cosine of the logarithm. So it's two functions multiplied together. This is function number one and this big one is function number two. So to take this derivative, we have to use the product rule. So it's going to be the cosine of x times the derivative of this natural log of cosine of x. I'll put a prime right there, plus the second term, natural log of cosine of x, uh, multiplied by the derivative of this term, cosine of x, and I'll put a prime mark there, and I'll do that next. So that's, that's a lot of writing, but you get the idea here. All right, on the left, we still have our 1 over y, we still have our dy with respect to x, and we have over here cosine of x, and on the inside, we're taking the derivative of this, but the outer function is a, the logarithm, so first we go 1 over the cosine of x, but then we have to take the derivative of the inside, and I'm going to do it right here. The derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. Otherwise, if I do another step, it'll take forever. Then we have natural log of cosine of x, and then we're multiplying by the derivative of cosine here, negative sine of x. So, We've actually taken all the derivatives, and we have this y over here still, so don't, for, don't forget about that. Now notice what we have over here. Uh, this is all multiplied together, so the cosine on the outside will cancel with the cosine on the inside. So that's a nice simplification. Um, and uh, then I, I think I want to clean it up before we move the y over here. So let's make it 1 over y dy dx. And on the right-hand side, this is all gone now, so you have a negative sine of x and then you have a negative sign from here, and then I'm going to move the sign in front, so it's going to be sine of x, 
I'll, move, I'll put parentheses around it, times natural log or cosine of x. Uh, I don't like having nested parentheses, but you get the idea. You have the natural log uh, of the cosine of x like that. All right, and uh, again, I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna factor out, since I have a common sine of x, one over y, dy, dx, I'm gonna factor out the sine here. So it's gonna be, I'm gonna pull out a negative sine of x. On the inside, I'm gonna have a one, I'm gonna make this a plus natural log cosine of x. And I'm gonna drop the parentheses. You know the cosine x is inside of the natural log like this. Uh, actually, I changed my mind. Let me put, go ahead and put the parentheses around just so nobody is confused. All right, so there we go. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're gonna multiply by the y and move it over here. And so we're gonna get dy dx, and it's gonna be negative, how did I write it here? Uh, sine of x, and I'll just put y over here, and then I'll open this up, one plus natural log of cosine x, like this. And now, this is the answer. This is the derivative, but we have defined y to be the cosine raised to the cosine. So dy dx, is gonna be equal to negative sine of x times cosine of x to the power of cosine of x, like this. And then I'll put a dot here just so I don't confuse myself. Well, actually I have brackets, so that'd be fine. I'll put the brackets here, one plus natural log of cosine x, close, close. Let me double check. Negative sine of x, I think just to make it more readable, I'll put parentheses around this. Negative sine of x times cosine of x to the power of cosine of x times one plus natural log of cosine of x. I don't care who you are, this is an ugly, ugly looking function. It really is. Uh, but look, I fit all the steps on one board. I mean, and I was showing every little step. So first, natural log of both sides. All right, then the exponent can come out. When you take the derivative, then you have the product of two function. So you have to take first times derivative of the second plus the second times derivative of the first. And then you just crank through it. You have this, the derivative of this is the one over the cosine times the derivative of the inside. Uh, the derivative of this became this, and then the rest of it became simplification, moving the y over here and then replacing with what we have, and it's just an ugly function. That's called logarithmic differentiation. It, it It's most helpful when you have functions that involve an exponent that you don't know how to take derivatives very easily any other way. Taking the logarithm of both sides allows the exponent to come out. And since we now know how to take derivatives of logarithms, then it, 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 we, we can see how we're able to solve very weird looking functions and take their derivatives. All right, so we have now covered the spectrum of what I would consider to be the most important core functions of how to take derivatives. We've covered the polynomials, we've covered you know, constants obviously, all the trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, all the, all of all six of them, and then the inverse trig functions, arc sine, arc cosine, and so on. We've covered derivatives of exponential functions, arbitrary uh, exponential functions, exp uh, exponential functions with base e. We've covered derivatives of logarithms and then uh, natural logarithms, and then of course any base logarithms. Uh, and then we learn how to apply that to weird functions like this, where you know it's just helpful to take the logarithm of both sides. So now what we have to do is take a little, little bit of a pause point in the next lesson. We're gonna begin a journey of talking about applications of what we have learned. Now that we know how to take derivatives of lots of things, what are some very common applications of how we use it in science, math, engineering? So follow me on to the next lesson. We'll be embarking on a journey of kind of using these concepts for applications in calculus. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.